Hello from Germany. My name is Luisa and I'm part of the data science team, as Beth already mentioned. We are a team of data scientists, pharmacists and clinical physicians who all help developing this use case. Because in um, healthcare, it is very important to have different views on uh, developing an AI model, especially when it comes to validation. Today, I, me and my colleague, Sundaria, would like to present our approaches in categorizing and predicting drug-drug interactions by using artificial intelligence and thus visual text analytics. So, let me start with the clinical approach to drug-drug interaction. Broadly speaking, when you take two drugs together, it can lead to drug-drug interaction. And let me just show you one of many examples. When you take these two drugs together, that can either have an effect on the efficacy or on the side effects. The um, mainly involved and, um, organs in pharmacokinetic um, interactions are the livers and the kidneys. So who are we? Dr. Regenold uses SAS as an analytical software to develop our AI models. Um, um, the data science team works closely together with the PV team, the medical team, the regulatory team, the CMC team, and the market access team. In this specific use case, we are working together with Professor Walter Heffeli, who is the medical director of the Clinical Pharmacology and Pharmacoepidemiology Department of the University Klinikum in Heidelberg. Professor Herfeli and his team developed a clinical decision support system called AidClinic, who is used by most hospitals around Germany, who is checking medication on dose adjustment in case of renal failure, inadequate medication in elderly patients, drug-drug interactions, double prescription, and incompatibilities. It is, among others, fed by information from warning letters, the patient information leaflet, the SMPC, and drug-drug interactions, which are mentioned in scientific literature. And that is what we want to focus on today. Because currently, um, they have to do that manually. And we wanted to come up with a solution to help this poor guy who is sitting there scanning all these literature articles for potential drug-drug interactions. So we came up with a smart solution scanning these drug-drug interaction articles. We, how do, did we do that? We used artificial intelligence. We had different approaches. First, we have a rule-based approach in SAS Visual Text Analytics. Then we came up with a supervised text classification model, and then we combined them both. But let me start with a rule-based approach. For the rule-based approach, we used SAS Visual Text Analytics. We fed all our drug, drug interaction articles into SAS Via, and then we, and by we, I mean us, the domain experts, uh, build rules around drug-drug interaction and all relevant topics around that. For example, the study design, target population, age and gender, drug exposure, pharmacokinetic, pharmacodynamic, and genetics. These rules were combined, then the articles were classified, and we got an output. Let me come back to that in the next slide. Here you can see the pipeline in SASVIA. SASVIA has an NLP process in the background, and um, so it is so. The data gets into SASVIA, then automatic contexts are, are generated, then the text gets into text parsing, then topics are generated, and then it gets into categories. If your documents that you put into SASVIA were labeled before, you get automated um, rules. Then the expert can um, refine those rules in several circles because every time 
you have to rerun the whole pipeline and check the misclassification, misclassification in order to make sure that you still um, classify the right articles. So here are our results. Um, in, in the upper left quadrant, you can see that 97 out of 1,319 articles were labeled as DDI, but the model classified them. Ah, no, sorry, they, they were labeled as DDI, but the model classified them as non-DDI. Um, here in the upper left um, quadrant, one triple two out of one third one three one nine articles were correctly classified as non-DDI. Four seven two five out of 5030 were correctly classified as non-DDI. 305 out of 5030 were labeled as non-DDI but categorized as DDI. The accuracy was 94%. So these are the same results but um, a bit more detailed. So the true positives for the non-DDI were 4,700. 24, 25, the false positives were 97, the false negatives were 248, and the true negatives were 1279. For the DDI, it was 1279 true positives, 2048 false positives, 97 false negatives, and 4,725 to negative. Let me hand over to my colleague Sandaria, who will go on with the supervised text classification. Thank you, Louisa. Um, good day, everyone. So as my colleague uh, Louisa presented the approach of classifying drug interactions using SAS visual text analytics, and this platform has combined power has a natural language processing engine behind, uh, which helps domain experts to uh, write rules, um, linguistic rules, um, together with uh, which the results become robust. There, although there are certain limitations in the rule-based text analytics, uh, when we have uh, highly variable data when identifying drug interactions, hence we had to fine tune our approach and had to look into supervised machine learning models as well. Um, the supervised machine learning models classifying DDI-related subgroups of interest uh, were developed using baseline labeled DDI-related data. Next slide, please. Um, so this is the process flow, how we performed uh, the classification. So we had, uh, um, so we extracted some articles from PubMed and uh, we use certain mesh terms to derive uh, copies of documents. And these copies of documents uh, were labeled per sentence. And the model we built was a sentence classification. Uh, we used a transformer-based model here in order to classify the text. The results were then validated by a domain expert. Uh, so in our case, it was a clinical physician um, for fine tuning towards the expected outcome. And uh, if the results were correct, then it was the, every statement or every sentence in the document was extracted. If there were deviations, then they were relabeled and were retrained. Next slide, please. So the results we obtained uh, were, uh, so the overall test accuracy was about 90%, and the F1 score of non-DDI was 0.89 and DDI statements were 0 0.90. Next slide, please. And if you look into the true positives of DDI statements, so we had about 395 uh, true positives, 67 false positives, 18 false negatives, and 355 true negatives. Um, so the results um, were quite uh, uh, promising on both the models, but we set our main goal to combine both um, rule-based SAS visual text analytics as well as supervised machine learning models. 
So the aim was having the best of both models. Um, next slide, please. Um, and then we'd like to present the combined approach. So the hybrid approach involves integrating the results from both rule-based and machine learning approaches using an ensemble model. Um, so here in this um, uh, slide, you can see that um, we use the similar kind of classification, but the main idea is to classify every statement in the document using both approaches. Once the classification is obtained from both the models, it is then used as an input into an ensemble machine learning model. So this ensemble model could be a random forest, for example, um, whose aim is to then select the correct classification obtained in the previous step. The user then checks um, the classification of the documents, and the incorrectly classified documents can be put back into the training set with manually corrected labels. Um, and if they are correct, you can extract it. So this was uh, an approach we thought of, but we are also interested in understanding how can uh, uh, understanding and uh, in different ideas of combining rule-based and supervised text classification models. Next slide, please. And um, the benefits um, are it improves patient safety, um, improves patient outcomes. Uh, it can help a doctor to speed up decision-making process and enable the doctor to obtain a quick and comprehensive consultation of patient and drug selection. Uh, and for a pharmacist, it helps in obtaining a comprehensive consultation of patients. And regulators can obtain the recent drug-drug interaction in an accurate and efficient way. And um, the question for the fuse was, use your imagination and do something unexpected. And that's where we were like, okay, let's try to do something unexpected. Uh, we tried to develop a model uh, in predicting drug interactions. And until now, we were talking about methods to classify and extract drug interactions from unstructured documents. Um, here, we would like to present an approach for predicting drug interaction using GANs, uh, that generative adverse real neural networks. Um, generative adverse real neural networks are being used for uh, discovering new drugs. The fundamental idea is uh, training GANs for generator learning and creation of synthetic molecules based on the examples that the network has already seen in the training phase. Our strategy is to adopt a generative approach for predicting new DDIs. Next slide, please. The first step in the data gathering process is collecting drug-drug interaction pairs and the corresponding symptoms from the drug bank database. Um, the next step uh, in the data gathering process is to find the SMILES format for each of the drug uh, drug drugs in the drug pair. Um, and uh, this is how we prepared our data set. Next slide, please. These DDI symptoms are vectorized using multi-label binarization scheme, which essentially means that a symptom occurring for a particular DDI pair receives a value one, whereas all other symptoms get zero, gets a value of zero. The SMILES format for each drug in the drug pair is converted into the numbers uh, using the uh, character level embeddings. At the end of this process, you, like you see in the slide, you have a single n-dimensional vector, which is created, containing the numeral, uh, numerical uh, representation of each drug in the drug pair and the corresponding symptom. Next slide, please. The next step in the process um, is to feed the numerical form of each drug pair and symptoms into the GAN. The GAN is initialized with a, ron a random noise vector. Afterwards, it generates fake sequences. The discriminator then tries to, uh, I'm not able to point my mouse, but uh, it's the, the discriminator node that you see there, uh, then tries to differentiate between the real and the fake sequences. So what you see in the original sequence on top 
uh, the generator tries to create the generated sequence is as close as the original sequence is. So that's the aim of uh, this exercise. Um, once the generator is trained to produce sequences which the discriminator cannot differentiate from real examples, it can then be used to create new DDI pairs along with the respective symptoms. Um, as of now, the DDI prediction approach is in the algorithm design phase. Um, due to limited uh, time, we were not able to um, and the limited data that we could collect, uh, it was insufficient to train the GANs. But after successful GANs uh, DDI prediction, predicting new drug molecules uh, involved in a DDI process can feasibly be executed, um, uh, which indeed helps improve strategies in executing drug safety profiles for uh, future potential drug candidates and um, clinical drug development phases. So this was an idea and um, an approach that we uh, came up with and thank you for joining us for this presentation. Uh, the complete team uh, who contributed to this project is here and we'll be happy to answer your questions.